This is David J.G. Doyle of Voice Actor Magazine. Here today with Mr. Richard Epcar. Hello. And Miss Helen Stern. Hello. All right. How are you two doing? We're good. We're great. Glad to hear you. All right. Now, since I'm not too sure as to how much time we have, so I'll just get straight to one of the big ones. What actually inspired you two to become voice actors? Money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be it, wouldn't it? Yes. We weren't inspired. We, I, I was uh, doing a film, and I had just wrapped on this film, and they asked me if I would like to audition for a voice job. I asked if I could bring my boyfriend at the time, who was wow. Richard, and they said, yeah, we both got the jobs, and it snowballed. Yeah. And to be honest, we had no idea, because we were both on camera, uh, actors that we were going to have a career as voice actors. Yeah, but it's it actually just happened. It's turned out to be a wonderful thing. Uh, it really has because uh, you know I, I often talk about this. Ellen, you know, Ellen's very still in. There's a lot of theater and a lot of on camera stuff still, and and uh, I do a little yeah. bit of it, not as much as I used to. But uh, I did a lot when I first came to LA. I did a lot of soaps and you know TV shows mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But. Uh, the thing that I really like about the voice work is you can basically uh, be any character that you can imagine vocally, and to me, it's almost more creative in many ways, you know. Uh, and that you don't have to learn lines. Well, that's nice too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you can be any character that you can create with your voice. You can be, whereas, especially on television, they basically relegate you to the way you appear, you know. Mm. You are relegated to the way you appear, but. Uh, Emotionally, you uh, well. We, I, I we play all. We, we have a difference of opinion on this. Right? I play all <laughs> but different I'm right, kinds. Just so you know. Well, he thinks he's right because he's a man, but you know he's totally wrong. He's totally wrong, and so I'm here to make that statement. Um, well, <laughs> well, how did my girlfriend put it? I'm always right, even when I'm wrong. That's your girlfriend said that. Yep. Well, he's always wrong when he's wrong. <laughs> Makes sense. All right. Makes perfect sense. So anyway, it's been a, it's been a wonderful journey. We've really enjoyed it. We're, we're both very thrilled and pleased that it's worked yeah. out the way it has. Yeah. 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 But it was very serendipitous. Um, you know, as I said, we had no idea that this was going to happen. And it happened, and here we are 30 plus years later, and... Uh, you know, here we are in, in in Australia, talking with you, David, and I mean, it's like, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy indeed. Ooh. I also remember some of my beginnings with you, like, a lot of anime, of course, but two, one particular big one would be Ghost in the Shell, yeah. where you were Batara. Yeah. And then there was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's this guy right here. Yes. And then, of course, there was Code Geass. Uh, not Code Geass, sorry. Uh, Bleach. Bleach, yeah. Yeah. Somehow get those two mixed I up. I play Zangetsu in that, and I also play the Bount. Mm. And I play Ichigo's mom, Masaki Kurosaki. Yes. Say that quickly three times. I was going to say, say it ten times. I had that for lunch with cream sauce. <laughs> That's why his stomach was growling so badly on the last interview. That's right. That oh. Masaki Kurosaki did not sit well with me at all, no, I gotta tell didn't. you. No. <laughs> no, but she was a beautiful character. Yes, yeah, she was. I loved her because she was very ethereal, yes. and she was very loving, and very kind, and very oh, gentle. Oh, honey, those are wonderful things that you can bring home with you. Honey, yes. you don't have to bring Batu. I'm just digging a hole for myself you, here. You don't have to bring Batu home with you. Batu, please. Batu. correctly. Batu. I do. Batu oh, you and you, too. You too! Yes. <laughs> you know, I keep, you you too, know I'm, I'm the voice of Raiden, you know, who's a god. I keep trying to explain this to my wife. She just laughed at me. I said to him, <laughs> honey, look, you have to understand. I grew up reading Shakespeare. You grew up reading comics. It's not that I'm not interested. I'm interested, but I don't know all the characters. It doesn't sound like a put down at all, does it? <laughs> it's not a put down. I just don't know them. So, you know, I learn. I learn. I'm yes. learning. 
It's and he's learning about Shakespeare. I grew up doing intelligent things. You grew up like an idiot. No, I'm not saying that. I I was fascinated with Shakespeare when I was 10 years old. Yes, I'm sure you were. I was. I used to read Shakespeare to myself in the mirror. Yes, that's normal for a 10 year old. Anyway, next question. I just realized <laughs> I think I'm one of the few guys in my school who are both doing comic books and Shakespeare. Well, see, there you go. You're yeah. the, the best of all worlds. So, see, you can. That's why you're the perfect person to interview both of us. <laughs> yes, but another reason would be that you've both been involved with Disney works in some repercussion. Like for you, Richard, it was Kingdom Hearts. I yeah. Believe. And you, Ellen, you just mentioned in a previous interview that you were mm -hmm. some sort of duck character that's about to come. Yes, out. I'm a duck. Quack. <laughs> um, I just... Uh, she I'm, is a, a duck, that's true. Thank you, honey. Um, I'm a duck in a new series called right, Limon right. and Ali. Right. And um, anyhow, and she's a wonderful character. And she's, she's just, she's very loving and she loves her children. And she's kind of like this. She's very funny. Who did you base her on? Because I hear a mixture of Catherine, 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 not Beaumont. Um, oh, I forgot her name. Yeah, she's a four-time Oscar-winning actress. Catherine I'm a professor. Catherine Hepburn. Thank you. Yes, I'm a professional. <laughs> love me or leave me, little lad, but don't just stand there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Catherine Hepburn sounds like a duck, though. No, no, but Carol know, Channing does at times. That's true. And Carol she kind of looks Channing. like a duck. Carol Channing is more like this. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to Maybe have you back her. where you belong. And somehow when you mix those two together, you get that duck. <laughs> no. You know what she's like? She's kind of like Edith from All in the Family. And um, and Vern, our next door neighbor. Yes, uh, there's a lot of Vern in there. At first, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. I am beyond curious. <laughs> and now, with you with Kingdom Hearts, it's interesting because you actually took over one of Billy Zane's roles. I did. The keyhole is now complete. You have served your purpose, but now it's over. Why did you show him the train? Because he missed the trip to the beach. Hmm. That's almost kind of you. Which was because you played Bateau, right? Yeah, the, the, the reason I got the role of uh, Ansem is because uh, Billy Zane did the first Kingdom Hearts and then, for whatever reason, didn't return. And uh, the guy who does the voice of Ansem in Japan does the voice of Bateau and goes to the show. So when they wanted to replace Billy Zane, they said, who does the voice of Bato in America? And they said, Richard Epcar, and they just hired me. And it's one of the few I can count on one hand. I've done over 400 characters, and I can literally count on one hand how many times I've been. They've actually just called me up and hired me like that. So that was kind of a nice thing. And uh, they brought me in, and I've done, since then, I've done six of them. So there you have it. It's, it's very nice because of the length of time that we've been working when we get called in because they know our range and they know our, our voice. It's a wonderful thing. Yes. But just back to King Lance for a minute. There's this, apparently there was this famous story involving the engineer and Sir Christopher Lee. Was <laughs> yes. yes, I've done He loves research. that story. Uh, okay. Well, what happened was, when I first went in to do Kingdom Hearts, I knew nothing about the game, I knew nothing about the character, I didn't know anything about it other than I, that I was hired, that was about it. So I went in and uh, basically I went in, there were six clients from uh, Disney in there, in the booth, and then there were six Japanese producers in the booth, and basically I would do a line of dialogue and the engineer would come on the talk back and say, just a minute, and they would talk amongst themselves for like five minutes, and they would come back and say, can you do that line a little faster? And I would do the line a little faster, and they'd say, just a minute. And they would talk amongst themselves for five or ten minutes and say, can you do that line a little slower? And this went on all day long. And finally, we had a break, and I pulled the engineer aside. I said, how did Christopher Lee put up with this? They said, oh, they did it to him once. And he said, all right, I'm going to tell you how we're going to do this. I'm going to read this script from the top to the bottom, and then I'm going home. And I thought, how cool is that? <laughs> Well, he is Christopher Ray, you know, Lee, you don't want to mess with him, he'll give you a shiv in the gut, so. 
Yeah, you don't want to mess with one of the last remaining students of J.R. Tolkien. I yes, yes. <laughs> but you know, I got to I got to tell you, it kind of cracked me up because I was I was I happened to inadvertently watch some interview with Spielberg and Lucas, and they were talking about Christopher Lee, and their big complaint with him was that he'll do one or two takes and then he'll walk off the set. He just doesn't want to do more than that. He feels like if he's got it right, then you know you should have got it in the camera, and if you didn't, then that's your problem. So it kind of cracked me up because he did the same thing to Spielberg and Lucas as he did to these guys in Kingdom Hearts. So I thought that was kind of funny. Plus, he's you know he's eighty something years old. He doesn't have, feel like he's got a lot of time to waste. I yeah, so. ninety three. Ninety three, really? Mm. Wow. You look at uh, like Pacino, and, Ooh, wow. and Pacino loves to rehearse, and he'll rehearse until it's until it's until it's really right. You know, so not everybody is like Christopher Lee. Yeah, but who would you want in a foxhole with you? Christopher Lee. Yes, indeed. Now then, we're At going. At 93? Okay. <laughs> still take all okay, of us in this room right now, I think. <laughs> maybe when he was younger. Yes. Now, we're going to have to wrap this up right now. So just our last question. Sure. What was your most rewarding moment during your careers? <clears throat> One of my most rewarding moments just recently happened. Uh, you do a lot of roles, but something happened where it was more than just me. It was about preserving an endangered language and culture of an indigenous language. And that was the Navajo people. I directed Star Wars into the Navajo language the dub of it. And it, it was Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And it was the first time that many people had heard their own language in, in, in a film. Can you imagine growing up and never having heard your own language in any media? I wouldn't even want to begin to think about that. Well, that's, that's what the elders uh, who are Navajo experienced and many of the plain Indians so uh, I, I directed it and I was three weeks on the reservation directing it working with Navajo speakers who had never before uh, used a mic who had never acted before and it was a challenging wonderful experience I made C-3PO a woman um, Solo sounds like Harrison Ford um, all I can say is it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience to, to witness the Navajo language, which was previously not even a written language, which was why we won the war. The code talkers helped us win the war, uh, World War II. So uh, go to Amazon and, and you, can, uh, you can get it. But um, anyhow, that was my most rewarding moment. Thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, Thank that's a, that's a hard one to talk. Uh, <laughs> me, I, I don't know, you know, I've just been very fortunate in doing a, a lot of different roles and things like that. I really enjoy what I do and I'm very happy to do it. And being part of the uh, Batman universe is, uh, is wonderful for me. I love that very much. I got to co-direct Art of Origins and play three characters in that and play the Joker in several Batman games. And, I played Solomon Grundy in an in a animated film, and I'm playing Christian Gordon in several animated films. So uh, it's, you know, it's that for me is very gratifying to be part of that. If I can just do one little plug before we leave. Of course. Um, I have written a sitcom, and Richard and I are going to be starring in it, and it's, um, <clears throat> oh, my voice. <coughs> A cross between Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Incredibles, and we're going to be filming that very soon. So I just wanted to urge all of your listeners to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and follow, you know, our journey as we uh, as we do this and, and other things. Thank you. And thank you very much, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is David J. G. Doyle of Voice Actor Magazine signing off and thanking you once again. Ellen Stern and Richard Edgar. Thanks for having us. Thank you. My pleasure.